heat distortion effect in Unreal Engine 5. Let's get started. So, first thing you want to do is add a feature content pack and add the starter content. I already added it right over here. So basically, you'll be using some textures from here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material. Or, so basically, I'm going to create a heat distortion material. I'm going to first go here. Make sure to change this to translucent. And change shading model to a lit. Make sure to check to set it. So go over here to refraction method and select index of refraction. All right, so the first step you want to do, we go to dynamic, create a dynamic parameter node, or here change some default value to black, and on the change, get the parameter one, plug it into a linear interpolation node, plug it into alpha, and for A, make it a one, and for B, make it a 1.5, and plug this in to the refraction. All right, now, you're going to want to seal, create a constant and set to zero and set its opacity because we want the opacity to be zero. And now, basically, you're going to create a new constant three vector and go over here, set everything to zero except blue. So it's going to be a very bluish color. And I use another linear interpolation. Make sure this is A. And for B, you're going to want to use the basic field to this. We're going to get a texture sample node. And from the content, starter content, you'll want to take the T water normal map. That's the reason why we would want to use the starter content. So then plug that into B. And now for alpha, you're going to want to Take this and add it to the clamp node. And in this clamp node, they're going to leave zero and one here. And then I'm going to get the power node, leave all the stuff as it is, and just add a sphere mask node, plug that in, and now over the radius, leave everything as it is. And now I'm just going to add a text coordinates, texture coordinate node. Here I'm going to add a constant vector, two vector. This will be 0.5 and 0.5. So yeah, I think that might be it for the material. Just double check everything. Make sure it's the same as mine. Oh, yeah. And make sure to connect slurp node over to normal. Otherwise it won't work. Apply and close this up. Now we're going to create a new effects in Niagara system. Create an empty Niagara system. NS and a heat distortion. All right, so now go over here and create a new empty emitter. Call this distortion. Distortion. And for this, you're going to create a sprite renderer and select your heat distortion mat we created earlier. So this M, heat distortion. By the way, if you are stuck, the same material also exists in the starter content. So you can check that out as well. It's very similar, it's almost, uh, almost identical. So, create the M heat distortion that we just used. Make sure to change the facing mode to face camera plane and the alignment to unaligned. Now, in the particle update, add a dynamic material parameters and change the parameter one to curve, flow from curve. So will be parameter one will be flow from curve. Now for this, set this to zero, add a key on the 0.5 time and set the value to 0.7. Here I just now that's good for this part. Now, add a solve forces and velocity, move it before that. Just leave that as it is. And now, scale sprite size. 
And for this, you'll just want a simple, simple slope like that. That's, that's good. Or some, you can always, you can always test it out to see how it works for you. But for me, I'm just going to leave it like this. And also don't pay, pay attention to these errors. We'll fix them in a second. So now at a particle state, there we go, we just fix the errors. So particle state, we're just going to leave everything as it is. There's only one option. Yeah. Well, yeah. So for the particle spawn though, we're going to add a initialized particle. In this initialized particle, we're going to set a random random range float. And this will be 1 and 1.5. This will ch let me get a random range flow from these two, from this range. So, and I'm going to leave this as it is. Go to spread size and set to non-uniform. Set this to vector 2D. Vector 2D from float. And change this to random range float. And set it to 100 and 500. For the rotation, we want to use a direct normalized angle and change the rotation angle to a random range float again. Let's set the range to 0.8 and 1.2. And now, I think we're done with this bar, so let's add another and the shape location. This will be a sphere and the radius will be a 40. All right. That's good for this. Now create a add velocity. And this here, you're gonna, just going to do a random range vector. And this is going to be 35, 60, 5, and 10. And change this to 0. So we'll leave it like that. Now add another. And this will be just color. And for this, you just want to have a simple. It's going to be a make linear color from vector linear color from vector vector and float there we go and for the vector it's going to do is one 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 for the float you're just going to do a clamp float and you're going to do is one is zero and one just like that easy and now, after you've done that, I go to the emitter update, go to emitter state, and set it to yourself, and make sure to check infinite, and, and check this box. Two of these boxes. All right, now, go to spawn rate. This is how many you want to spawn. I'm going to spawn at 20. And just like that, you see we got some heat distortion in here. And yeah, so yeah, that'll be, that's it for the video. So if you drag it out into the, into the scene, you see we got some beautiful heat distortion. Obviously, you can change the size properties here. But after this, this is, works perfectly. Always, you can always see it, no matter from what angle you look at it. From the top. So yeah, I think that looks absolutely amazing. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. See you later.